Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Vermont Community Foundation's 2021 annual meeting. Ah, uh, the best laid plans. You know, we had hoped to be gathering together, together, eating barbecue, family style, celebrating the work of philanthropy, celebrating our neighbors, celebrating community. Um, but that's not what was in store for us and not, not what was in store for our communities and the universe of philanthropy and our partners uh, right now. So um, acknowledging that and acknowledging that we all thought we might be in a different place at this moment, I just want to express my gratitude to you all for taking the time uh, hearing this messages, hearing from our partners in this uh, uh, annual meeting and hearing our report on our work, uh, because I think it is a source of inspiration uh, for everyone when you think about where we are as a set of communities and where we might go. Um, I do want to open and just take a moment to reflect a little bit. Um, I'm going to ask you to think about the lands on which we stand and the indigenous heritage uh, of those lands. I want you to think about someone or something, a moment of service and a moment of inspiration, a moment of leadership, a moment where somebody stepped up uh, and you witnessed it and reflect on that because those are the moments that are gonna give us hope and energy as we continue to wrestle with uh, the uncertainties of a global pandemic, the uncertainties of the volatility socially and culturally that we all feel. So take a moment, reflect a little bit, and search uh, for your experience in the last 18 months for some point of inspiration. Okay, in a minute I'm gonna hand it over to our board chair, Carolyn Dwyer, for some words of guidance and leadership and advice, um, and reflection. Uh, we'll also dive into our governance update. This is the annual meeting of our members and our directors uh, and our organization. So there's a little bit of reporting and work we need to do. And I wanna share a business update on the work of the foundation. Uh, but the bulk of this meeting is gonna be focused on the incredible experience of the last 18 months, uh, the role of philanthropy and uh, helping neighbors help neighbors, uh, the role of the nonprofit sector, the role of community organizations, uh, and the role of the, the, and the power and potency of the connectivity that exists in the cities and towns and the small villages across the state. Uh, because of our biggest objective and our strongest hope is that you leave this meeting energized for what lies ahead, powered by a sense of potential, uh, and with a renewed sense of optimism for the connection that we share as Vermonters and members of Vermont communities. Thanks for being here. On behalf of the Vermont Community Foundation Board of Directors, I wanna thank you all for joining us for the 2021 annual meeting. I don't have to tell you all how difficult the last 18 months have been. You've experienced it for yourselves. But what I do wanna share is some good news. Good news you made possible. Because of our generous funders and our nonprofit partners, the Vermont Community Foundation was able to deploy unprecedented resources during an unprecedented time of need in our state. In fact, because of our partners, the Vermont Community Foundation was not only able to continue our work on closing the opportunity gap, but to also stand and deploy millions of dollars through the COVID Relief Fund, a fund that not only helped meet immediate food and shelter needs, but also help sustain our childcare infrastructure, provide mental health services, free college tuition, and so much more. In addition, because of all you've done in providing support and inspiration, our staff was able to draw from you to find their own inspiration for the work they were doing. I can't thank them enough on behalf of my fellow Board of Directors members for all you have done during such difficult circumstances. We're grateful every day, not only for our staff, but for our partners who work to make sure Vermont and Vermonters can thrive. So the good news I bring is good news made possible by all of you. And I think if this is what was possible during the last 18 months, think of what we can accomplish in the next 12. That's good news to look forward to. Thank you, Carolyn. I'm tremendously grateful for your advice and consultation and leadership over the course of the last 18 months and that of the entire board of directors of the Vermont Community Foundation. I also wanna just say thank you to all of the people who shared their voices and perspectives and insight uh, for the production of this annual meeting. And, and you're gonna hear from some wonderful people in the coming minutes. And uh, this is also a moment uh, where we have to share our transitions in governance. This is the business meeting, annual meet, part of our annual meeting. 
Um, I want to take a, a second and just recognize uh, two board members who are coming to the end of their term. Michael Metz, who's a powerful voice and networker, creative thinker, uh, who brings energy and entrepreneurship and creativity to the work of every organization that he's a part of, and the VCF no less. I'm sorry to see you term off, but I'm grateful for your uh, creativity and advice over uh, the time I've been here and the nine years that you've been on our board. And Meg Seely, uh, who is our board chair for the first part of the pandemic, uh, whose commitment to philanthropy and her neighbors and to the organization is just astounding. And I'm incredibly grateful, in particular, for the way you held in your heart uh, the needs and um, the pressures facing the staff of the organization in a time of crisis. Uh, I'm grateful for your leadership. You'll be missed as part of our governance and part of our, uh, our board. I also want to take a moment to welcome two new directors elected uh, by ballot of the members. Uh, Kate Williams, uh, who's a, a executive director of 1% of the planet, uh, and Cindy Char, who's a longtime evaluation and educational expert, uh, two creative thinkers and, and wonderful minds that are going to be a part of our uh, board of directors for the coming years. And it'll be great to have your leadership around the table and your vision for Vermont communities as a part of the organization. There are also a number of new members who are elected by virtue of the ballot of the members. You'll see them listed on the screen. Part of a long-standing commitment, uh, really deeply energized uh, and committed to by our nominating committee, uh, chaired by Will Stevens, a member of our board of directors, uh, to diversify and uh, deepen the perspectives at the board level and among the members of the Vermont Community Foundation. So work we can always do better, work we can always improve on, but work we're committed to doing over time in the context of our governance. We've also welcomed new staff to the Vermont Community Foundation. Abby Myers, Kate McCarthy, Shauna Trombley, Brittany Lux, the new Dave Rar Fellow in Community Philanthropy, Molly Walsh, and Adam Bornstein. That entire structure, staff and governance, reflects an organization challenging itself to increase its impact on Vermont communities year over year. By the numbers, what did that mean in 2020? It meant more than $52 million active in Vermont communities. That was $32 million of grant making, our largest grant making year in history. It meant $15 million worth of place-based mission investments in Vermont communities, and $5 million of program expenses. It meant $12.4 million directly through the Vermont Community Foundation focused on responses to the COVID-19 pandemic. That includes the aggregate impact of all of our component funds and support Supporting organizations, folks like the Vermont Women's Fund, folks like the Jay Warren and Lois McClure Foundation, whose gift to the class of 2020, offering a free course at the Community College of Vermont, changed the trajectory and sense of potential and sense of opportunity facing young people in Vermont in a time in which they needed it most. It includes Let's Grow Kids and their commitment to high quality, accessible early childhood care and education for all Vermont youth, the Samara Fund for LGBTQ youth in Vermont, the Curtis Fund, the single largest scholar grant maker in Vermont, the Addison Community Athletic Foundation, and the High Meadows Fund, whose disciplined commitment to watershed response and uh, the needs of the working landscape in rural communities in Vermont has been a source of inspiration and guidance and advice for, for many of us over the course of uh, our history of community development in Vermont. And we did this all while we navigated incredible volatility. We started 2020 with $390 million of total assets. By the end of the first quarter, that had dropped to $307 million of total assets. And by the end of 2020, that had recovered to roughly $400 million of total assets. So people gave when the market was down and it cost a buck 30 to give a dollar. And they gave again when the market recovered, recognizing the cognitive dissonance between the experience of the financial markets and the experience of their neighbors who are wrestling with the implications of the pandemic. Vermont is full of good people trying to solve big things. This fall represents the confluence of a number of anniversaries, 20 years since September 11th, 2001, 10 years since Tropical Storm Irene, and now we live in, in the middle of a global pandemic, no doubt whose anniversary we will recognize going forward. The one thing we've learned as a community foundation, as a set of communities, is that we can't afford to get comfortable. We need to learn to build in our adaptivity and our innovation over time. I'm incredibly proud of the work the Community Foundation has done over recent years to embody that flexibility, embody that adaptation over time. Another anniversary that we marked this fall, I've been at the Community Foundation now for five years as of September 1st. I think about the changes that we've gone through. 
uh, commitment to closing the opportunity gap, a strategic focus on early childhood care and education, access to college and career training, support for youth and families, and driving towards the community and economic vitality of Vermont communities. I think about the ways we built in community engagement as a function of our grant making. We built in data and geography so we can identify communities where momentum is most needed and put all of our resources to bear strategically in those places where need is greatest. And I think about that commitment and the strategic statement it makes about the future of Vermont and our ability to build partnerships out of that that are robust and strong and create the connective tissue that I think leads to greater resilience over time. And I'm proud of those changes. I'm proud of the work of our organization, the generosity of our funders and the creativity of the nonprofit sector in Vermont. All of that leads us to 2020 and COVID-19. The pandemic landed in Vermont and we know uh, that the public health response uh, was really effective in Vermont. But we also know that it landed on communities that were fragile, uh, on people who relied and existed in an economy and a, uh, a social environment that was vulnerable. And it accelerated the challenges that they faced. Uh, it embodies the need and our response embodied the need for philanthropy to hold multiple truths at one time, which is that we need to be focused on the basic needs facing our neighbors while in continuing to engage on the long-term systemic issues that drive towards greater resilience over time. All told, across all funds in 2020, the Vermont Community Foundation made roughly 4,200 grants. Transactional volume was through the roof in an environment where our staff and our organization was fully disrupted and fully remote, as with many other organizations. Again, I'm proud and I hope you share my pride in an organization and a community and a constellation of philanthropy that was nimble enough to be where it needed, to be where it was needed and able to respond as effectively as it was at a time when Vermont communities needed it most. I'm proud of that and I hope you are too. So I'm going to turn it over to Gay Symington and a number of other folks to share their perspectives on philanthropy in Vermont communities and the role of philanthropy in the COVID-19 pandemic and the role of philanthropy over time. So when I think back about Tropical Storm Irene, I think, you know, is there was this immediate impact and how are we going to get people into back into safe, warm, dry homes and rebuild those roads and bridges so people can get places. But the bigger question is, what does this mean for Vermont? Irene kind of became old news. It was, oh, that was then. But for low-income Vermonters who's, who lost their homes, it, it took years to get back into stable homes. And I think it was uh, Deb Markowitz who called uh, the philanthropic community, the Vermont Community Foundation, and said, we have this immediate work to do, but we know there are long-term impacts here. Can philanthropy help us with that longer-term thinking while we're working on this immediate issue? And, um, and that sort of began a process of asking, how do we plan better? How do we think about our watersheds? How do we think about the way that the, to protect roads and housing and people from the power of storms that we know are going to be more frequent and more harsh going forward. Um, and that was a real aha moment for the, for the High Meadows Fund. Our work in land use had been fairly passive. We had been, um, and it became much more actively involved in supporting local watershed groups with very modest amounts of, you know, grant, size grants to provide the connectivity to help people understand their relationship to their watershed, to the waterways. And I think that's what philanthropy can also do, is stick around. It can step in when there's an immediate issue, but when you really want to build re resilience over time, you need uh, to keep at it and you need to stay committed. And, and that's what I'm thinking about now when I think about the pandemic. You know, again, it was something we were all clued in on, we're all aware of, we're, it affected us all. But it's going to affect low-income folks, marginalized folks, folks with vulnerable um, folks in their families, much longer than it will for many of us. So much of our impact as a community foundation is informed and defined by the effectiveness and depth of our partnerships. Um, we really believe that partnership is the infrastructure of the coming decades. 
I think about that frequently when I reflect on uh, the work of the High Meadows Fund as part of the Community Foundation and Gay's leadership as Executive Director of the High Meadows Fund. I particularly appreciate the way she frames both the need to respond on a short-term urgent basis while holding the complexity of long-term systems change. And that's the way we think about the opportunity gap facing the next generation of Vermonters and our commitment to community resilience over time and stitching back together that sense of common experience that face our next generation. I want to acknowledge that the High Meadows Found Fund is going through some, uh, a transitional moment um, that is informed by a high degree of trust in its partners, including the Community Foundation. I urge you to stay tuned as uh, news will come in, in the coming months around some really exciting and potentially transformative commitments uh, to the working landscape in Vermont around uh, land ownership and farmland succession. Uh, a truly uh, a powerful vision for what community resilience in rural communities can look like for Vermont uh, and where we might go in the coming years and decades. So that's going to be incredibly exciting. I urge you to stay tuned and, uh, as that comes forward. It's also just the commitment to generosity. Right? The commitment to lift each other up is something that has been such a powerful experience um, of the last 18 months. It's something we at philanthropy have the in philanthropy have the privilege of witnessing that intersection. Um, if you take anything away from this meeting or anything away from the last 18 months, take away the degree to which Vermonters stepped up for each other, the degree to which neighbors were committed to helping their neighbors. There's so much noise nationally, there's so much noise globally, and there's, it's all urgent, but the reality is on a local basis, on a regional basis, and on a state basis, by and large, we looked out for each other, we gave in support of each other, we volunteered in support of each other, and that is, I think, who we are as Vermonters. In 2020, the Vermont Community Foundation supported a generous amount of philanthropy uh, to Vermont communities, uh, statewide organizations, and across the country. First from our fund holders who generously gifted millions of dollars to causes that they love, uh, including the Vermont COVID-19 Response Fund supported by the Vermont Community Foundation. We received more than uh, $9 million to that fund in 2020. Uh, gifts from ranging from $5 to $2 million. Uh, we received gifts from uh, those who were honoring loved ones that they lost to the pandemic. Uh, we received a generous gift from the Chinese school who held the fundraiser early on and contributed to the fund. It was a tremendous amount of philanthropy, of generosity, and it made possible so much relief and support, um, and it allowed for us uh, to really meet Vermonters where they were throughout the year. The speed and trust that characterized philanthropy and the response uh, to the pandemic uh, created space for incredible innovation and ingenuity on the part of uh, community organizations in the nonprofit sector across Vermont. Uh, whether it's micro grants from principals, uh, the Department of Libraries standing up Wi Fi programs, uh, innovation in food access using restaurant and kitchens or turning uh, otherwise dumped milk into yogurt, uh, the adaptivity and innovation on the part of the sector in response to the crisis is an incredible testimony to the informal and formal networks that make our communities stronger. Uh, over time. I'd ask you to think about uh, a moment of ingenuity or creativity on the part of the nonprofit sector over the course of the last 18 months and drop it into the Q&A so we can capture uh, that insight and that feedback and share it back to you at the end of the uh, program. There's an important aspect of our work that's also uh, important to share as we think about 2020 and it's the degree to, we put, to which we put community at the heart of what we do. Philanthropy and funders uh, across the board, uh, we, we do this sometimes to uh, uh, fall into the trap of thinking about a specific issue, thinking about a specific thing, and they want to go deep on that specific thing. But on a community basis, that runs the risk of externalizing all of the other factors and all of the other conditions that are defining the experience of community. So we've put a premium in the last five years on community engagement and trying to understand the factors and characteristics that are unique to a place and engaging in that place and trying to figure out how philanthropy across all of its tools and tactics can be an instrument of change over time in that place. That's characterized our work in a number of places. Uh, you're about to hear from some folks in Rutland uh, whose work and partnership has been important to us over time and over the last 18 months. We work with the Rutland Youth Coalition and we're a group of about 65 different organizations, agencies, parents, and youth that get together every month to talk about how to make Rutland County the best community for youth. 
Last year in 2020, when the pandemic hit, everything was shut down. So not only were kids at home from school, but then during the summer, the camps were all shut down. And it, at best, they had a third capacity. And so we had a lot of kids who had nothing to do and were stuck at home. And so what we decided was instead of uh, trying to figure out how to get kids to the camps, we actually brought camps to the kids. So we created these innovative out of the boxes, activity boxes. And we had hundreds of volunteers that came out every other week to say, yes, I'm willing to do this. And then I'm gonna take these boxes and I'm gonna distribute them all across the region so that youth have access to these fun activities this summer. The Mint is a community maker space, so we're a membership organization, kind of like a gym for your brain. So you come and you use our tools and equipment and you make whatever you like to make. And people make amazing things here. The things that we make, make us. And when you are connected with great resources and great people, you make better things, you make better versions of yourselves and you make better versions of your community. Early in COVID, the hospital reached out to us here in Rutland because they were unable to source any face shields. You just couldn't buy them anywhere. So a team of folks here at The Mint worked with our robotics club and some amazing people here at The Mint to develop a prototype that we were able to take to the hospital and make a face shield that we could produce 100% here at The Mint out of a single material. Vermonters are very supportive of each other. Uh, they, they look at a situation like a pandemic as a problem that we can work together to solve. Uh, and that is really something that keeps the energy here in the makerspace, makerspace bright. 2020 was also a year in which we deepened our commitment to lean on our Vermont mission investments as a component of the change we want to see in Vermont communities. We view a commitment to addressing the underlying economic circumstances of cities and towns across Vermont as a key piece of our theory of change. So much of what charity and philanthropy is asked to address is a consequence of the underlying economic circumstances faced by people in those communities. Uh, we're thrilled actually this year to be launching a charitable fund product that'll allow people to select a, a, a full allocation to the Vermont mission investment pool so that their charitable funds are 100% invested in their backyards. It also offered us a tool and a lever to put to work very quickly in response to the pandemic with a close partner, VSECU, standing up a loan program to fill a gap that existed before the federal government stepped in with the support and the resources associated with the federal programming and the federal response. It's called the Member Emergency Loan, and it was a short-term, low underwriting, sort of low requirements in order to qualify loan for emergency purposes, particularly in the early days of the pandemic, there was a lot of uncertainty. Um, some of the federal stimulus that ultimately came through hadn't come through yet, but yet people you know, had lost their income, uh, went to zero. And particularly to be able to provide short-term, small-dollar loans to individuals at very low underwriting costs, uh, very low underwriting standards, but also at up to 0% cost allowed people to pay for food to heat their homes, uh, to support the transportation needs, their basic needs. We also learned from this experience, so I think it has added capacity for both of our organizations. So that money that was used to support the member emergency loans still resides within VSECU and can be used for other purposes down the road. And so it's more than just solving a specific problem in a moment in time. The community foundation support also allowed us to add to our capacity and I believe to the foundation's capacity as well uh, in terms of what we can do in the future for other kinds of emergencies that may face Vermonters. Last spring, an anonymous couple asked if, if there was a way to support small businesses in Manchester, Arlington and Dorset that were in harm's way due to the pandemic. The Community Foundation designed and hosted Vermont's largest private sector business relief program, a competitive grant program for businesses experiencing verifiable financial losses. The couple offered a $500,000 challenge grant, which inspired and was matched by other local donors to create a $1 million business relief program. The fund awarded 55 grants to small mom and pop businesses with more than 300 employees. Small inns, restaurants, hair salons, retail shops, and others that are the heart and soul of the community's character and its vitality. In a follow-up survey, we learned that 77% of businesses use the grant to fund basic operations, and 70% said it was vital or very important to their continued operations. 
One of the beneficiaries was the Arlington Inn. The Arlington Inn is not just a popular destination and one of Arlington's few restaurants. It is also a community hub. It hosts the farmer's market and other community events. In better times, they were the ones who always stepped up to meet community needs. Elizabeth Berger, co-owner of the Inn, talks about the value of the program to her family business. So a year ago when we received the grant from the Community Foundation, it was indispensable to us and it allowed us to take care of some carrying costs and realize that there was a chance that we would make it out of being closed from COVID. It was an incredible struggle and without the generosity from the Community Foundation, I don't know how we would have been able to move forward to get to this point. One of the things that has been the most incredible about this last year is the diversity of work that the communities across Vermont have been able to engage in. Um, it's been a time when people and organizations have come together, uh, where public and private partnerships have been formed, and the Community Foundation is built for moments like this. Um, we've been able to really catalyze uh, the work that we've been doing around the opportunity gap uh, and accelerate work to help systems change in Vermont. There are three projects in particular that are really exciting. One was a partnership with um, the Office of Racial Equity in Vermont, and that was for the Economic Stimulus Equity Program, where the Community Foundation partnered with community-based organizations across the state, asylum seeker groups, Migrant Justice, NOFA Vermont, and others, to move direct assistance to Vermonters who were undocumented and didn't get federal and state dollars. And that was an incredible piece of work, a lot of community organizing, lots of hours on the road. Another project that I'm really proud of is uh, a food access project where we work to partner with um, commodity dairy farmers in Vermont with the Agency of Agriculture and the Food Bank so that we could pay for milk to be processed and moved into the food access and emergency food system. There was some incredible work around the food resilience effort uh, in this last year. And then one other initiative that we had, which was the Welcoming Equitable and Anti-Racist Communities Initiative. I'm really excited about the work that we did with the Vermont Principals, School Boards and Superintendents Associations to help support equity initiatives in schools and provide teachers and school leadership with resources and tools to really understand what diversity and equity and inclusion mean in their schools today and for the future. It's moments like these that it feels like the Community Foundation really finds its stride and is able to lean in on all the partnerships it has all across the state uh, to move quickly and flexibly uh, and to make Vermont um, more resilient for the future. One of our theories about Vermont communities is that we're stronger based on a sense of common experience and the sense of connection that exists across Vermont communities. Part of our work now and into the future is the degree to which we can use community philanthropy to foster a stronger sense of belonging to all Vermonters. One of the programs we launched last year during the pandemic was our BIPOC CSA, which is a free CSA program for BIPOC folks in Wyndham County that offers culturally relevant Afro-Indigenous heritage crops that we grow here in Vermont in a box that is given weekly. And the funds from the Vermont Community Foundation have helped us in many enormous ways. Um, they have allowed us to establish our organization and have the funding and resources that we've needed to actually be able to pay um, staff to do the incredible work that we are doing and to build the organization that we're building and to have the capacity to develop our strategic plan, our programs, um, all of the resources and support that we'll need in the future. Um, and they have also offered us or given us funding that has supported us in um, purchasing the things that we've needed to start our free, free CSA program. So tools and gloves and seeds and all of the different things that we needed to even make this um, program a reality and feed um, 35 families a year. Juneteenth was is very important to me because I've always had a Juneteenth celebration so it was a little selfish of me to go yeah there's not one here okay we're gonna do one here um, so this Juneteenth that we had this past June was a Juneteenth that I've never experienced before. So it was kind of just like my fantasy of what Juneteenth would look like here in Burlington 
and I think we were able to pull it off quite nicely. Every single site had a black experience. Um, the one that the Vermont Community Foundation helped with was a site where we had a healing village and that was something that was a black only space and it was something that VCF was really passionate about sponsoring for us. So the food insecurity program is so that um, black and brown people can go and they can buy culturally appropriate foods. We got, I think, 575 gift cards from $100 denomination to $500 denominations. And we're giving those out to families who are in need. As a youngster, um, I knew what it's like to go to a food bank and pick up a box of food and not knowing what's in that box. Um, I'm very happy that there are people who are willing to give so that people like myself growing up had food to eat. Um, but most of the time it wasn't culturally appropriate. So I wanted to give people an opportunity to, get, to have a little bit of dignity and go shopping for their own food and also to buy the culturally appropriate foods that they need for their families. I believe that diversity is important to Vermont's towns and communities for many reasons. It's not only important for town government, it's important for the business community, uh, it's important for the overall future of our state. But it's going to take a lot of effort and time for us to make a cultural change. We want everyone in this community to be treated fairly and equitably. We've worked so closely with the Community Foundation at the Vermont Council on Rural Development for a whole generation. I've been here 21 years. This is my last year. It's been an exciting partnership. I've seen the Community Foundation change and grow and reflect the needs of Vermonters, look at the opportunity gap and really think systemically about what we need to do to build a better Vermont. It's been an honor to be part of its deliberations. They've also been an incredibly important funding partner of our work as we've changed and grown and take risks on everything from the climate economy to the future of the working landscape to the work that we do town to town as a neutral facilitator of public process, supporting local decision making, setting priorities, gearing up for action, helping people get big things done to transform their communities for the future. The Vermont Land Trust and the Vermont Community Foundation are similar in a bunch of different ways. Um, we're also really close partners and it's been an incredible um, it's been an incredible thing to grow that partnership with Dan and his team over the last five years. Um, you know, I think one of the ways that we're most similar is that we have this statewide presence and mission um, and we really think about uh, doing work that benefits Vermonters in the broadest way possible, really addressing the most critical needs that we have today. The Camille Foundation does that through giving, um, through philanthropy, um, through community connection. We do it through land and really building the land people relationship. For us, the relationship that we have to land and the way that we use land and manage land here is a really important part of that. But the fundamental goals that we have, I think, are very similar. In some ways, probably, I'd say we have the same mission when it comes down to it. So I'm going to ask you all a question and invite you to share it in the Q&A so we can aggregate some of the responses and reflect them back to you. But when you think about the next 10 years in Vermont, and when you think about the next 20 and the next 30 years, what are the things that give you hope? Our vision as a community foundation is for a Vermont that's at its best and Vermonters who are at their best. And one element of that vision is the idea that Vermonters look out for each other. I think that's been our experience in the last 18 months, that Vermonters look out for each other. But there's also a broader question. What does it mean for Vermont communities to be at a place of greater resilience? And what is the role of a community foundation in pursuing that? I think we've started down that path when we think about closing the opportunity gap and the future prospects facing young Vermonters. We've started down that road when we think about greater racial and socioeconomic and regional equity. We've started down that path when we think about the, 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 the strength and vitality of rural economies and rural communities. We've started down that path when we think about uh, the working landscape and the vitality of those enterprises and those farmlands. We've started down that path when we think about how we adapt to the changing climate and what that means for community resilience over time. But I challenge you to ask that question as we look forward what is the role of philanthropy? And here are a few voices to share their perspective as we go forward. We as Vermonters have a natural tendency of stepping up and helping each other when times get hard. And realistically, throughout the pandemic, times got really hard. It was that shared sense of sort of responsibility and collaboration and collectiveness, if you will, 
that allowed all of us, I think, to get through this and, and in a better way than we otherwise would have been. But I think that there's a lingering effect to that collaboration, just as we saw with Irene, um, that, that hangs around afterwards. So again, it's capacity building, if you will. It, you know, it sticks. Um, it doesn't all go away after the emergency is over. We've had this heightened sense of empathy and connectivity during the pandemic. Will it last? Um, we've realized the ways that racial injustice is at work in the community when we see the disproportionate impacts of the pandemic on, on communities. And will we still be talking about diversity, equity, inclusion eight years from now, 10 years from now? Will we still be talking about who's an essential worker and supporting our caregivers and our food system workers, you know, the child care providers, they, they turned out to be really, really important, you know, over the last year and a half. I hope we remember that. And I think that it's philanthropy can remember those connections and keep the empathy alive as this immediate sort of stage of the crisis when we're all focused on it begins to dissipate. Keep the empathy alive. But a note to wrap up on, I want to thank Gabe for that sentiment. And I want to take a second to acknowledge and thank Gabe for all of her leadership and frankly her friendship over the time we've worked together as she heads into retirement at the end of this year. I'm very grateful for the opportunity to work together and to bear witness to the impact you've had in Vermont through this role in the last 10 years. I also want to acknowledge and, and thank Paul Costello as he wraps up his time at the Vermont Council on Rural Development, heads into retirement in the coming months. Uh, thank you for your thoughtful leadership, your advice, partnership, and friendship uh, during the time we've had to work together. If you're to take one thing away from this annual meeting, one thing away, one message, <clears throat> one message, I want you to take away the fact that Vermonters stepped up for each other. Vermonters stepped out for each other. It's been an incredible 18 months. The stories that you've shared in the chat, stories of youth mentors adapting, uh, organizations delivering services differently, uh, Catamount Arts preparing PPP in its facility. Everybody stepped up for each other. There's something to celebrate. Right? For all the noise we have nationally, for all the noise that's out there, we need to take this moment and celebrate the degree to which Vermonters stepped up for each other. There are so many stories to tell. Each of the 4,200 grants we've made over the course of the last year is a story in and of itself. That's something to celebrate. I'm grateful for that. Vermonters stepped up for each other and the Community Foundation stepped up for Vermonters too. Five years ago, I promised that the Community Foundation would grow in impact, scale, and relevance through creativity, ingenuity, and a willingness to explore. We've reinvented ourselves over the course of five years with that focus on the opportunity gap and the centrality of community engagement in our work. We've reinvented ourselves in the last 18 months in response to the pandemic as it case got, cascaded across our communities. We will reinvent ourselves again in the coming years, because now is the time, right now, we're setting the table for the next 30 years. Today, we have a chance to reset. There's a sense of new beginning. We can't relapse into our old orthodoxies. Our commitment as a foundation is to not lose ground from where we stand today. We're a different organization today, and we will continue to adapt just as the sector around us adapts and just as Vermont communities adapt. We have an infrastructure as a foundation. We are statewide, and yet we're tied to every community in the state. We have insight from the grassroots to the systemic. And we will continue to challenge ourselves to make the greatest difference possible. So I wanna thank you for joining us. I wanna acknowledge that again, that this is not the format in which we hope to reconnect with you after such a remarkable year uh, with so much, um, so much turbulence and yet so much to celebrate. I wanna thank you all for all that you've done for your neighbors over the course of the last 18 months. And I want you to know that as we look forward, 
We see a bright future of partnership, engagement, and vitality across Vermont, across our landscape, and across our communities. So stay strong, be well, and we look forward to connecting again in person when we can. Thank you.